Hallelujah. There was times and instances in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, um, that when the disciples went to cast out devils or they had power and authority to heal, that they wasn't necessarily successful at doing it. And we've covered this before. And so we're going to revisit some of the things that we've already went over. But you have to listen real careful because even though we're, we are revisiting some of the things that we went over before, there's going to be a, a, new, a greater understanding to what we're going over. Because, you know, if you don't continually to do something over and over again, then that habit will diminish. And you will lose your cutting edge. You won't be as keen. Is that right? And you definitely will not be as effective uh, as you would have been if you stayed in shape or stayed in practice. Stayed acutely aware. Is that right? Hallelujah. <clears throat> we bless the name of Jesus. But over in Matthew, um, the 17th chapter, and want to read right here the 14th verse. And let's just see how the account reads for itself. And, and mind you, whenever we read in this book, we have to place ourselves in that position. We have to see if we are lining up to this. Let's just see how Jesus dealt with people in this day because we often hear the song that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And this whole world has this assumption that Jesus was just some pious figure that went around singing kumbaya and blessing everybody. And he never once reproved, rebuked, correct, or instructed. Well, let's just see about our Jesus, okay? Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. Now watch this. Watch this now. This man is coming to Jesus. It's only this next verse from where we started right here that we're going to find out the actual context and order of things that's going on. The man's action was, and I bought him to thy disciples. Did y'all hear that? So the man's action when, he, when we're reading this is that um, this man had already bought his son to the disciples of Christ. Now, why did he bring them to the disciples of Christ? Well, I'm sure word probably had got around that these disciples was doing the same thing that Jesus was. Because they had delegated power. They had delegated authority. They had the power to heal, to heal the sick. They had power to cast out devils. Is that right? And so, you know, um, he went to the disciples and he assumed that he would probably get the same results as other people had gotten because he went to those who were disciples. And the word disciple means someone that is a student, someone that is learned, someone who is a pupil, someone who sits at the feet of Jesus, the Messiah. Is that right? And are we not disciples of Christ today? All right now. And Louis says, so, and I bought him to our disciples, and they could not cure him. The disciples couldn't do what? Cure, cure him. Well, let's just see how Jesus responded on this. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you, and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Now I submit. He wasn't talking to the man that was looking for healing for his son. He was talking to his disciples. Because Jesus expected healing to take place, especially when he delegated power, when he delegated authority to his people. Hallelujah. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said, Because of your what? Unbelief. That seems to be the thing that is uh, attacking the assemblies today everywhere, worldwide. You know the reason why people don't cast out devils, speak in tongues, believe in keeping the commandments? Um... Healing or healing the sick. It's all because of unbelief. I submit that Jesus was very upset and mad. Because he had already given power to his disciples. And yet and still, with the power and authority that they had, they misused it. 
And the church today, in 2009, is no better off. And if Jesus came today, a lot of people think that he would be hugging and, and kissing on everybody when he has nothing but a solid, confirmed word of upbraiding and rebuke. Amen. Because we are just simply not doing the works of Christ, as he said. Hallelujah. Let's go over here just for a second, over here to Luke, the ninth chapter, and let's look at verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority over all devils. Did y'all hear that? Is that right? And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So we see that the Bible already confirms, and these people, no doubt the disciples were already in a position of being sent. Because when Jesus came up on the scene, the man came up to Jesus and said, I, I, I'd already giving my son to your disciple, and they just could not heal him. They couldn't cure They could not cure him. So they was already out at least doing the work in this particular instance. All right? And look what he said. And he said unto them, you take heed, um, you take heed, take nothing for your journey, neither stays nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter, into there abide, and thence depart. Now, many, many places that we may travel and go, we're welcome. Other places, we're just not welcome, brother and sister. And I, hey, as the time comes closer, as we're drawing closer to the coming of Jesus Christ, I don't expect for too many houses or doors to be open. The, the work of the ministry is going to be accomplished out on the highways and the byways. Because so many people have been so influenced by theology, religion, and just the American way of so-called faithless, perverse Christianity that now we've got, or all we've seen now is a bunch of people reduced to just mouth noisemakers. You ever seen those noisemakers? Some of them you can, you can blow and it'll roll out, and then, but it quickly comes back in. Are you following? And that's what Christianity has been reduced to today. Just a bunch of people making noise with no power. But that's not what Jesus said. Is that right? And neither is that what he did. He gave it to us, brothers and sisters, and, and I submit to you that we should always be about our Father's business. Amen? Amen. So we have a, um, a, a lot of people, a lot of people, um, who continue to go out and preach God's word. At least they believe they're preaching God's word. Um, the spiritual condition of people um, is reflecting that they're really truly not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because every time we read about the gospel being preached, there is some form of power manifested from God. In every instance where the gospel is being preached, there's a healing taking place or there's some devils being cast out. His kingdom authority is being showed and expressed. Amen. So pride in theology is amazing because it will limit you. And you have to make sure that you, your own self, haven't developed your own little sealed houses uh, where you get comfortable with and you don't allow yourself to be challenged by the faith that is written in this word right here to become doers. Amen? Amen. Now, you've all, every single one of us, had a distinct pleasure of trying to talk to someone who says that they agree with the word, and yet in their actions, they disagree. 